Oh, you thought living in the high desert meant that it was just always sunny, super hot, and it looked like all the stuff you see on TV? Well, I'm here to tell you guys that aside from this pine tree that smells super good after it rains, we do get tons of water here, especially during this monsoon season. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a few things that you guys are gonna wanna take note on that I personally do when it comes down to living in a high desert climate. So hang tight, grab your pen and your pad, and let's go. Now, what beautiful weather we've been getting the past couple of weeks. And with all the rain and all the sunshine, you know, makes a good balance, guys. And I gotta tell you, if this is your first time tuning in to the Living in Albuquerque channel, welcome. My name is Eli, go ahead and hit that subscribe and notification bell down at the bottom. That way you guys never miss out on any videos because we are dropping videos every week talking about what our beautiful city of Albuquerque and surrounding areas have to offer. Now, just being fully transparent, as much as we love doing these videos, we would love to help you out with your real estate needs because we are licensed brokers and we'd love to make sure that you're getting all the right help and all the best services when it comes down to moving to Albuquerque, New Mexico. So if this is you and you are planning on moving down with the next 90 days, the next year, feel free to hit us up. That number popping up on the screen is our direct line. Feel free to hit us up. I am the one that answers all the calls, texts, and emails, and I look forward to hearing from y'all. But let's head back to the office. Sounds like the rain is starting to stop just under a little bit, but I think we're gonna be okay. Alrighty, now just giving you guys a full understanding of what to expect when it comes to living here in the high desert climate. And it's not gonna be anything crazy. I'm gonna make this as simple as possible. You're gonna have low humidity, an abundance of sunshine, and comfortable weather throughout the whole year, right? Cool evenings and cold mornings, and then nice warm days throughout the day, right? Any Anytime from like 10 to like five, it's gonna be nice and warm. And believe it or not, when that sun is rising and when that sun is actually setting, it tends to get a little warmer, especially in the summertime. So just keep in mind that we're not gonna be dealing with these outrageous temperatures of 110, 105 or anything like that. Maybe a few days throughout the year, especially in July. But after July, going into August, the temperatures start to really come down and get super comfortable. Now, what does that mean in terms of all this, right? Because we got this super good climate and I promise you it's not just a bunch of dirt everywhere. It makes it good for an outdoor type of lifestyle, which means that you're gonna be spending a lot more time outdoors. That just doesn't mean going and hiking, biking, mountain trails and all that stuff. That just means going outside and hanging out in your backyard on a patio, enjoying the weather, gardening, tending to your yard, stuff like that, because you're not gonna be afraid to go outside because it's too hot or too cold, or just the weather is super crazy. Again, you are gonna have those days that are tucked in between, you know, the 365 days because the weather is not perfect anywhere that you live, but here it's actually pretty mild and pretty comfortable. What is the impact on the homes and all this stuff? And how does the climate and weather correlate to everything here? Well. Number one, you're not gonna have all these crazy natural disasters and immense snowfall that is gonna put some stress and deter the house and cause a bunch of maintenance issues. Depending on where you live, right, you may have a house that is a little bit older. It's a flat roof with tar and gravel, not TPO, which if you are wondering what TPO is, uh, feel free to reach out because I'd love to kind of educate you a little bit on that. But tar and gravel, where everything just kind of puddles and creates so much stress and so much weight on the roof, especially on flat roof houses, they're not pitched, that you're just going to be maintaining the roof a lot. Now, outside of that, guys, a big thing that people see when they are moving here and I've had to explain is that a lot of the houses here don't have gutters. It's totally normal, it's nothing crazy. We totally recommend putting them on there because when it does snow and it does rain, you don't want it pulling right next to your concrete slab, which in most cases nowadays, they do a great job of sloping down the builds and making sure that a lot of that water that is coming off the roof just escapes down into the street. And in terms of how people landscape their yards, right? Because we don't like to deal with weeds, grass, just depending on what side of town you're living on is hard to maintain. To be honest with you guys, I had grass when I first moved into our house back in 2016. It was super nice, but I was out there every day just watering it, tending to it. And it was a job, it was a lot. and. As a novice homeowner, it was just a lot. So now we have a concrete slab with 
like zero scape and if you guys don't know what zero scape is that means that much of the yard is pretty much graveled which makes it super easy for me to go out there and burn my weeds or spray them with weed killer just making the upkeep of everything super manageable And I know a lot of this stuff seems too good to be true. It seems great, but to be honest with you, it presents some big problems. Again, I don't want to seem like we're perfect. So I want to spit it to you guys, you know, as transparent as possible. Do we have water issues? No, but does water get scarce? And is there times where they tell us like, hey, you can only water from this time to this time? Or they tell us like, hey, these are the best things to do to conserve water or energy. And man, if you're at home, open up all the blinds. That way you're not using all this natural resources or driving your electric bill all the way up because you got all these lights on, especially with idols. I mean, in our house at any given time, we got about 13 devices going on all at once. And that's my wife working from home, internet, PlayStations, Fortnite, me running the channel, all that stuff. And it adds up, right? Especially now that we got a pool. The pool just made our bill go up both in electricity and in water because it's been hot during the day and every other day I gotta fill it back up with the water because water does what it water does and it naturally evaporates, right? So with that being said, guys, can you pay a higher bill during the summertime on both ends as far as water and electricity? Yeah, especially if you got refrigerated air. I mean, I'm surprised to know how much people that we talk to on this channel don't know where refrigerated air is. And just to put it in a nutshell, it's a cooling system that runs kind of similar to your vehicle. And you get this pretty much instant cold air versus waiting for these pads to get wet. It drives compressed air through a centrally forced system. This just pretty much is already cold on demand. Most of the time I run my house at 74 and I actually have to turn it off because it gets super cold. So it's a godsend. It's a little bit more expensive and you will pay a little bit more on your utility bill because it runs off of electricity. So a couple things that you can do to combat that kind of stuff is get all the smart home plugs, right? Get the thermostat that you can control from an app. That way, when you do see that AC to kick on while you're not at home, you can kind of control it from your phone, wherever you're at. And then two, if you don't got kids, don't put a pool up. But if you do want a pool, just understand that the maintenance of it is going to be pretty expensive. But if you don't want a pool, West Mesa and Rio Grande will satisfy those needs of just going out and, you know, getting a few laps in, hanging out with some buddies and some friends. Or if you got a friend that lives in an apartment complex, I know growing up, we always had friends that had lived in apartment complexes and we'd go and swim at their pools for free. Um, so things that you can do to combat that kind of stuff, you know, it's not going to be anything crazy or anything new, right? Everybody does this, but here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, we're all about preserving the natural resources that we have as much as possible because we want to leave all this natural beauty and everything that we have for the next generation to enjoy. So we do our best to conserve these natural resources and save some money. Adapting to this new high desert lifestyle is not going to be anything crazy, guys, I promise you. And I guarantee it. It's going to be a super easy transition. I love that word, super easy, because it is. It's me being super transparent with you guys to let you know that when you come and move here to Albuquerque, the climate and the weather patterns and all that stuff sometimes can be a little kind of, you know, um, questionable because it can be sunny and raining and it, I've had days where I'm just like, man, that's pretty crazy. But anyways, really adapting to that isn't going to be hard. There's going to be more sunny days than, you know, cloudy days and rainy days. If anything, this past monsoon season, like I let you know, it's sunny throughout the day. And at night, you just get those clouds starting to come in. And it's kind of a treat. You know, it's nice to get that cloud coverage and that rain to come in and cool everything down. Split, especially if you plant a garden. Believe it or not, some people have some crazy beautiful gardens. We grew one two years ago and uh, we got totally demolished by the sun. I had a video where I kind of talked about that and geez, man, like the sun just came through and baked everything. Novice growers, so any of you guys that can give me some growing tips on, you know, having a successful garden in the desert, I'd appreciate it. But really guys, your lifestyle is gonna really revolve around all the different seasons and all the different weathers, right? Springtime, you're gonna be spending some more time outside because it isn't super hot just yet. You're gonna be outside in the bosque, hiking, you might even travel to Jemez, Santa Fe, 
all these different little towns that are outside of Albuquerque just to kind of experience some different things, maybe even go fishing. We like to do that in the springtime. We like to head up to Pecos. Yeah, the, the fishing just gets super good around that time. A couple of the things that you can do as far as like enjoying the climate and stuff like that during these different seasons, right, is the summertime, you're pretty much just gonna chill out, hunker down because it does get hot during the day and then you're gonna figure out things that you can do in the evening. But having that blue collar lifestyle, that you know nine to five kind of lifestyle that we have here, majority of the time you're gonna be at work. So you're not even gonna be bothered. You're gonna try to figure out what you can do during the weekends, maybe plan some weekend trips just to get away to maybe a Taos, Santa Fe for a staycation. Oh, Caleta, which is a resort that is in between Albuquerque and Santa Fe, which is an awesome resort to stay at. Get massages, enjoy the hot springs and all that stuff. Going into the fall time, it does start to get a little bit cooler, so you might want to go and do some more hiking, some more biking during the days, especially since the days are starting to get shorter and a lot more people are, you know, planning vacations, doing this kind of stuff because of the holidays. And then, of course, once winter comes, it does get super cold at times. So, man, you're really going to be spending a lot of times indoors and taking advantage of those sunny days that come through during that time. But investing in layers, that's one thing that you're going to want to do, right? Good jackets, some, some good shorts, all that stuff. And I'm not going to say that you have to buy all this designer crazy stuff like North Faces, Patagonias and stuff like that. I wear that stuff because I personally like the brands and what they stand for. And um, yeah, we can never afford them when we were younger. And now that I can, I just, I don't know. I love to, to be able to purchase those kinds of things for me and my family. But just buying sustainable stuff that will last you for years to come. And you don't need to have a big wardrobe either, to be honest with you guys. Because fashion here isn't a big thing. We kind of just wear what we like. And me and my wife are having this conversation of, you know, different styles and stuff like that. And, you know, Albuquerque is one of those places that you pretty much wear simple stuff you're not going out and trying to you know present this image and all that stuff people do but for the most part 80 percent of the people are just wearing what they like and being comfortable uh, because of the weather right you're going to be taking layers on and off throughout the day and you're always going to see jackets in the back seat of my truck uh, year round right because you just don't know and how does the climate and the weather tie into our community and your community lifestyle and all that right it's a really good question and it's gonna allow you to get outside more, to enjoy more patios, go out to the breweries. If you're brand new here and you just don't know what friend group to interact with, I mean, getting out there with these people is gonna be super easy because that's what they're there for. They wanna mingle with people, they wanna get to know some strangers and they just love that atmosphere. And Albuquerque has tons of breweries where you can do that, restaurants, depending on your scene or what you like, you know, you can go and find different groups that are doing different things throughout the week. So all depending on what your flavor is and what you like, it's gonna be very easy for you guys to be able to click with somebody and make a new family here possibly. And one more thing before we end the climate and how it affects the community and stuff like that. You know, we have a lot of pop-up events, a lot of farmers markets, and that is because of the awesome weather that we have here. You're basically going to see one every weekend and these small businesses love to get out into the community and to connect with their customers to create more friendships you know aside from business because they understand that the community here is good is what's going to carry them right the people that are constantly going in there being regulars and all that stuff you know i have my regular coffee shops that i go to regular bread spots and panaderias and restaurants and some of these places already know me by name and it's actually feels pretty good to be able to go in there i know i only got that vibe back when i was in new york because man in new york you're 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 going everywhere on foot so your places become your places and you know you're going in there once or twice a week very consistently and after a while these people start to recognize you and know your name and spark up conversations with you and you spark up conversations with them the, the rest of the, the family there, the workers become part of your friends groups and then you meet other people that are, you know, friends with them and, you know, so on and so forth. So, you know, that whole community aspect, the climate, just getting out to the farmers markets that they're holding every weekend, even when the weather's crappy, they're still hosting and just because they understand that the rain is going to come and go, you know, it's only going to last for 30 minutes and in the winter time it's not you know negative degrees so it's bearable enough to go out there with a the sweater and a nice jacket
Man, what a great topic to talk about. Climate, community, things that you can do to be able to save some money and be really proactive on your sense of you know, combating the climate here. Now, it's not gonna be anything like Florida where you're having to deal with hurricanes and it's gonna damage all your properties. We do have high winds here, so we'll make a video on that just explaining how the high winds work and how people combat living in high winds. And really, it's only gonna be maybe a few weeks out of the year in the springtime that you're gonna be dealing with the high winds and uh, the things that come with it. But for now, the awesome climate that we have here in the high desert, it's gonna be very mild, very manageable, and it might even make you feel a little, little bit more alive and willing to get outside more often because, hey, it's not gonna be too hot, too cold. You really can kind of predict what the weather is gonna be here at times. So making it super easy for you to plan that next weekend trip or the activities for the weekend or the weekdays. So if there's anything else that I can help you guys out with or you wanna talk about, you know, the best places to live based on the weather patterns, the climate and all that stuff, and things that you can expect on each side of town because I'll let you in on a little secret. Albuquerque's weather varies by zip code. It's a local joke that we run here. So all depending on where you wanna live, the weather and the weather patterns are gonna be a little bit different. So if you wanna chat a little bit more about that because you are planning on moving down here within the next 90 days, that number popping up on the screen is my direct line. I love to sit on a quick Zoom call with you guys just to talk about all this, right? And then also talk about what that house looks like that you are purchasing in these areas. So if there's anything else we can help you out with, I am that one that answers all the calls, texts, and emails. So feel free to reach out and we'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good week. Peace.